يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتوا تنا إلا وأنتم مسلمين مسلمون Peace be upon you all. My name is Omar Khalil. And I was asked by the brother to give the khutbah for today. And I've been thinking what I should talk about. And I, I was thinking maybe I should start from the basics, the beginning. Because I feel like as long as one person doesn't know, then it's good that I give this basic, uh, basic uh, khutbah. Now I want to ask you, why did you choose to wake up? Why did you choose to come here? Most importantly, why did you choose to come here to sit down and listen to me speaking before you? Why? Why not stay at home? Why not stay at home and sleep? What made you get up and come here? I hope I can answer that question for you, inshallah. But I want to I want to um, tell you about some of my experiences giving dawah at El Camino. I'm a student at El Camino and uh, sometimes I give dawah. And you, it's, it's nice. Uh, you have some nice people come by and talk to you. You have some people that, that are angry. They don't like Muslims. You have some people that are funny. And this one stranger came to me and I told him, everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. A tree has a purpose. Your car has a purpose. Your clothes, your keys, your shoes, your glasses, they all have a purpose. So if everything has a purpose, what is your purpose? I asked him, what is your purpose? The tree gives you shade, gives you oxygen. Your clothes gives you warmth. So what is your purpose? And he said to me, I want my, my purpose is to be happy and to make a lot of money. Which I thought is a little bit funny, but being happy and making a lot of money, they're good things. There's nothing wrong with making a lot of money. But why is that your main purpose? Why is that your ultimate purpose? That shouldn't be your ultimate purpose. Your ultimate purpose should be worshiping the Creator. But I did not tell him that. I told him that these are good things that you say. But they are secondary, secondary purpose. They're good. That shouldn't be the ultimate purpose. I mean, I understand why he said, be happy. Because if you're going to live this life, you might as well live happily. But to make money, it doesn't make sense. Because you can make all the money in the world. You can spend years in school. You can spend years in school and years working and saving and saving. And you might die early. You might die in your 40s. You might die in your 30s. So you cannot have a retirement. So that money does not sleep with you in your grave. That money will be somebody else's. That money will be in this world while you will no longer be in this world. So why? Why focus on making money so much? We should focus on things that will benefit us after we die. So I told him, Eventually you will die. Then why don't you ask, why don't you think about what happens after we die? Isn't that the smartest thing to do? Yes, it is the smartest thing to do. To prepare for the Akhirah. So how happens after we die? What happens? Is there a Creator? Is there a God? Let me look at my phone. My phone has glass, it's very unique. Glass, aluminum, plastic. Do you think this phone appeared in my hand out of nowhere? Or do you think this phone was created by a creator? 
Yes, this phone is created by a creator. There are people, teams of people. Samsung, they have a team of people. They got together and they created this phone. So doesn't it make sense that we did not just come out of thin air? Doesn't it make sense that we also have a creator? Yes, it does make sense. It does make sense for us to worship a creator and believe in a creator. So now you believe in a creator. Doesn't it make sense for this creator to give you a guide? Yes. When you buy your phone, it comes in a box, but it's not just the phone in the box. There is paper inside. There are instructions on how to use your phone. So doesn't it make sense that Allah has given us a guide? What is the Bible? Injil, Torah, Quran. These are all instructions. The only difference is the Quran was the last, preserved, the example. It makes sense that God will give us a guide, our Creator. And that is Islam. Islam is our guide to the Akhirah, guide to life. Islam is everything. You cannot pray your Salah in the morning, spiritually, and then after, when you go to work, you leave Islam. You do not practice Islam. You do not pick up trash when you see trash on the ground. You do not do simple things. Don't be mistaken. Mis mistaken. Islam takes up every aspect of your life. Islam is not just a spiritual religion. Islam is everything. It's, it's education system, social system, education, economic system, and most importantly, justice system. So that is Islam. Very basic. Very, very basic. Very bare minimum of what you should know. You're here sitting. Might as well know this. Might as well repeat it. It's good to know. Good to remind you about. So what is Islam? So I told you there is a creator. I told you there is Islam. There is a guide. So what is Islam? There are two things. Two components. One internal and one external. And the internal is the six articles of faith. External is the five pillars of Islam. I'll go over them briefly. Not briefly. The external briefly. So internal. After I get over the six uh, articles of faith, we'll take a small break. Internal, the first. It's to believe in one God. To believe in complete Tawheed. Qul huwallahu ahad. Tawheed, the oneness of God. There's no partners, no sons, no sisters, no mothers. God does not have mothers. God is one. Two. Messengers and prophets of God. God sent messengers throughout time to people all around the world. Well, Middle East. There should be no discrimination between prophets. No prophet is better than the other. The only difference is Muhammad وسلم, was sent to us as the last and final messenger. Muhammad وسلم, is the, the example, the guide to the Akhirah. It's the only difference. Number three, it's a belief in all kitab, all book, Torah, Injil, Quran. You need to believe that these are divine scriptures. Number four, 
angels. Do not get mistaken between angels and jinn. There are a difference between them. We cannot see them both. But the difference between angel and a jinn is that the jinn has free will, like we have free will. And there are creations from Allah. And the angel, the angel does not have free will. And when Allah gives the command to the angel, the, the angel follows the command. That is the difference between angel and jinn. <coughs> Number five, the day of judgment. Does it make sense to have a day of judgment? Yes. Yes, it makes sense. Look, for example, Hitler, Stalin, they killed millions, killed millions and millions and millions of lives, murdered, tortured. Do you think just because they're dead, everything is justified? Is that real justice? He killed millions of people. They killed millions of people. And what now? If you do not believe in Allah, there is no justice. One day, one day, in the day of judgment, Hitler and Stalin and people like them, they will stand before God and then they will be punished. If they need to be punished. And others will be rewarded if they need to be rewarded. <coughs> Six, predestination. A Muslim believes in the ultimate knowledge and power of God to plan and execute his plans. God is wise, just, and loving. And whatever he does must have a good motive. Although we may fail, to sometimes realize and understand it fully. The believer should have strong trust in God. In contrast, the knowledge of God is limitless and He plans on a universal basis. Humans should think, plan and make sound choices and then put their trust in Allah and praise God. If things do not happen as they want, they should still praise God. And if things happen as they want, they should still praise God. So it doesn't matter if you did not get what you wanted, you should still praise God. Because Allah knows what's best for you, and Allah knows what's good for the affairs of mankind. These are the six articles of faith. It's very important to understand and to think about them. Stop. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu rasulullah. Those are the internal parts of being a Muslim. Now the external, very briefly. These are very obvious to you because you see people doing them. You see people practicing them. There are external. Shahada, Salat, Zakat, Fasting, Hajj. Salat is very important because you take a break from your life and to connect to God and pray to God directly five times a day so you do not stray from Islam. In Hajj, some people may get confused. It is very expensive, but you still try your best to go. Just like your phone, when it's low on battery, you recharge it, don't you? See our Amen, it fluctuates up and down. It's very important for us to recharge our Amen. That is the whole point of Hajj, one of the, one of the points. My message today is very simple. To so be a Muslim, you are here, you are sitting here, listening to me. Might as well think about your life, 
and be a Muslim. I just gave you what it means, the bare minimum of how to be a Muslim and what it means to be a Muslim. You'll never know when your time is. You never know when the day is where you will pass. It's very important for you to understand that. Do not say, oh, Omar, when I get older, I'll become a better Muslim. I promise. But right now, I'm in college. Please let me be. Let me have fun. Do not say this. Because you'll catch yourself. I mean, you probably won't catch yourself. But in the future, you'll continue to say this and you'll get older. You'll be in your 30s, your 40s, and you'll die. So what? All those years wasted, you could have prepared for the Akhirah. Don't postpone your time to think. Don't be so silly. Do not be far away from reality. Because that is our reality. We are finite in this world. We will die. And it's time for you to adopt Islam. Collect your thoughts and adopt Islam. But today be the day you become a good Muslim, inshallah. And take baby steps because you want to die in your highest Iman. You don't want to die in your lowest Iman. So take baby steps. Do not rush things. Learn at your own pace. Attend weekly halaqas. Stay close with Islam. Do not go far astray. Go to the masjid regularly. Reap the benefits of the night. Go to the masjid. Pray Asha. Pray Fajr in the masjid. Don't let yourself run away from Islam. Islam should be what you are worshipping day and night. Now, I'll recite to you a quick hadith. On the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, who said, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took me by the shoulder and said, Be in this world as though you were a stranger or a traveler. And that is half of it, I will not, I'm low on time. Do not be atta so attached to this world. Do not be so attached to this world. Because this world is not forever. Be as a traveler. You are simply running through this life. Do not be so silly. Yesterday you are in your mother's belly. Today you are here now, sitting before me and listening. Tomorrow you'll be dead. Tomorrow you'll be standing before Allah. You'll be judged. Be realistic to yourself and be Muslim. That is my khutbah for today. And I want you guys to do some homework. But do not turn your homework into me. I'm not God. Turn your homework into Allah. But simply give dawah. Give dawah to your co-workers, your, your classmates. And if you're too shy, that's a problem. Shyness is not good in Islam. Shyness is not the same thing as modesty. Okay? Get rid of the shyness. And if you can't, at least try your best. At least try to give da'wah through your actions. That is stronger than your tongue. That is your homework. Give da'wah. Pick up trash when trash needs to be picked up. And when a non-Muslim sees you, they'll say, why? Why did this person clean the floor when he doesn't even work here? You have to understand that there are people that are watching Give da'wah through your actions. And then they'll say, oh, he's Muslim, that's why. So that is, that is my khutbah. And I'll end with a very, very quick dua. O oh Allah, our Lord, give us all the good of this world. And the good of the laugh hereafter. And save us from the punishment of the hellfire. Okay,